Good afternoon, everyone. It's a privilege and pleasure to present something that is uh, very, very much dear to me and I'm very passionate about. So the first few slides are just a general uh, sclerotherapy related, and then I will talk about cryosclerotherapy. So I was probably one of those spiders asking this question before I did my fellowship uh, a little over 30 years ago. As you know, the varicose vein and the spider veins, they have the father and son relationship. And uh, as you all know, you treat the varicosity and the reflux first, before you treat the cosmetic spider veins. The spider veins are the, can be the tip of the iceberg, so one has to look uh, deeper down before you treat the, the tip of the problem. The principle is to treat the, from big to small, to treat the feeder vein first, and then the smaller spider vein, as you all know. Sclerotherapy is the gold standard and is the most effective for treatment of cosmetic spider veins. The surface and the YAG laser using the 1064 wavelength laser may be helpful, but in my hands, it is the second line of defense. Sclerotherapy is in science and in art. Injecting veins is not difficult, it is quite easy. However, injecting them well is difficult. Sclerotherapy will lead to the inflammation within the spider vein, leading to fibrosis of the, uh, of the little vein leading to closure of the spider vein leading to disappearance uh, of the vein and improvement in the aesthetics. The sclerotherapy uh, options uh, using the detergents are sotridecol or STS which was approved in September 1991 and asclera or polydocanol which is approved in March 2010. This is the dilution chart used for STS as well as for POPI. Now I'll talk about cryosclerotherapy. So I look like a robot in this picture. I'm using the Ceres Scientific, uh, the cross-polarized light. And what you see, the nozzle or the tube that is blowing the cold air as I'm injecting the spider vein. So this is the machine, which is the Zimmer cold air device. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that. Um, it basically uses chilled air and blows the cold air on the skin to numb the skin as you are injecting the spider vein. This is the video that is being shown. Actually, let me see if I can start with this video first. So here is the vein being injected. This is the cold air being blown on the skin. So the skin is being numb as you're injecting, making the, the patient feel very little pain. This is the second video. So again, this is being injected, the cold air is being, is going on the skin. So what are the advantages of cryosclerotherapy? Firstly, 
the cold air numbs the skin and makes the procedure virtually painless. What I found in my little survey, from a pain score of six, it went down to two when asked the patient. So that was a significant improvement in a patient experience. Further, making the vein go into spasm after you inject, there is less sclerosin that comes out. As you know, when you inject, there is some sclerosin that comes out. As the vein goes into spasm because of the cold air, there is less amount of sclerosin which leaks out, and therefore, the results are better. It's more effective, and hence, less number of sessions are required, and there is better patient satisfaction. So, the question is, does it work? And yes, it works better. These are the results. These are my patients, before and after. Again, spider veins, before and after. When it comes to reticular vein, it is prudent to use the transit illumination vein light to inject. Now, how do I do cryosclerotherapy? What are my goals? Uh, I will give you some tips. The goal is to make the vein disappear, the spider vein disappear, but not cause any hemosiderin stain, which is one of the biggest problems with sclerotherapy, as you know. The idea is to make the treatment experience painless. The strategy of cryosclerotherapy. What I do is, because some patients will respond better with poly and others will respond better to STS. So over the almost 30 years that I've been doing this, what I have been, what I did. Uh, so about 15 years ago, first of all, I, I wanted to take my game to the next level. And that's when I introduced cryosclerotherapy concept. And I found the results to be much superior to just the traditional sclerotherapy. So what I have been doing for more than 25 years is I use in the first session in order to find out whether the patient is going to respond better to STS versus poly. I use poly on one leg and STS on the other leg. So right off the bat, I come to know whether the patient is going to respond well to one agent versus the other. And I start low on the strength, 0.1 to 0.3%. I gradually increase the strength in the subsequent sessions. And I don't know how many of you in the crowd have mixed STS and poly in the same syringe. By show of hands, can anybody tell me please? So I've been doing this for the last, for more than 25 years, very successfully. The goal is I mix STS with poly in subsequent sessions, not initially. Once I know that there is no hemocytorin state, the goal is to make 1 plus 1 plus 1 equal to 5. So you use lower strengths, but the ultimate result is much better because you are able to get improved results. So I'm going to talk very briefly about hemocytorin stain. And uh, without that, this will not be appropriate. So our problem with sclerotherapy has been hemocytorin stain, and this is the problem. So the causes of hemocytorin stain is the strength of sclerosin could be very strong. Sclerosin solution, as I indicated, it could be due to poly or STS. So one has to figure that out. Darker skin types are more prone to getting hemocytorin stains. Trapped blood or hematoma will cause hemocytorin stain. And the area of the leg treated, like ankles and back of the knees, are more prone. So I try to do that later. How to prevent hemocytorin stain? The money is in the cocktail, as you can see. The Venus cocktail, as I call it, one has to customize it. Figure out which sclerosin is suitable for the given patient. 
go low to high in the strength for the sclerosin. Treat no sooner than six weeks. Add 72% glycerin as well as heparin to the venous cocktail along with the sclerosin agent to reduce the chance of hemosiderin stain. Now, treatment. One can use topical triluma ointment to reduce him to treat the hemosiderin stain. One can use surface lasers, Aura I KTP laser with 532 wavelength, or Alexandra laser with 755 uh, wavelength laser, which I use, or the intense pulse light. The laser on the left is the 532 wavelength KTP laser, and the laser on the right is the um, Alexandrite 755 wavelength laser. And with that, I thank you.